Over the last year, the topic of digital game conservation has become more important than ever. We've seen the first wave of closures of eShops in history, and if you're a Nintendo fan, everything but the current generation is closed. The Wii, the Wii U, and the 3DS eShops are all gone. You can re-download games, but you can't purchase anything new. And that got me thinking about the current generation eShop. What's going on with the Switch? Are games being delisted, and if so, are people keeping track? Of course we know that games have been delisted from the Switch eShop, Nintendo themselves have delisted Fire Emblem, Super Mario 35, and 3D All-Stars, but is more than that happening? And the answer is yes. There are loads of games getting delisted from the Switch eShop. Fortunately, the folks over at delistedgames.com have been researching this since the very beginning. Their hard work and dedication is what led to the creation of this video. It couldn't have been done without them. But I wanted to get a little more narrow in my search. You see, Delisted Games has found 86 titles that have been removed from the Switch eShop, but they're looking strictly at the eShop. I wanted to focus on games you couldn't buy anywhere. That means no digital copies and no physical copies unless you go hunting through bargain bins or at the secondhand store. So I was able to unearth over 64 games out of that 86 game list that are no longer available to purchase anywhere. So without further ado, here are 64 Switch games you can't buy. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Every week I dread planning my meals, choosing what to eat, heading to the store, buying more than I actually need, and then when it comes time to cook, I end up blankly staring into my fridge with no idea what to throw together. That's why when that HelloFresh box arrives on my doorstep, I couldn't be more relieved. With over 45 recipes to choose from, I never have to question what I'm going to make, and I'm not overstocking my fridge in the process. HelloFresh's quick and easy meals give me time back to spend with my family, to do things I enjoy, or to just not be stressed about what to make for our next meal. And if you've got a sweet tooth like I do, new subscriptions come with one free dessert item per box for life. I tried their chocolate lava cake, and it's amazing. So do me a favor. Click the link in the description or use my code GVG16FM and get 16 free meals plus free dessert for life while your subscription is active. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video, and let's jump right back into things. In 60 seconds, you have to gather your family and provisions and escape to your fallout shelter before the world is thrown into a nuclear winter. It's developed and published by Robot Gentleman, and it was delisted from the eShop in January 2021. 60 Seconds was removed to make way for a new version of the game dubbed 60 Seconds Reatomized, which remains available on the Switch to this day. You're probably familiar with the well-received Arcade Archives series released by Hamster on the Switch. There are literally hundreds of games in it, but did you know that four titles in the Arcade Archives Neo Geo series were quietly delisted from the eShop? Super Sidekicks 2 and 3, the Ultimate 11 SNK Football Championship, and Neo Geo Cup 98 The Road to Victory were all removed from the Switch eShop in August of 2020. No official reason was given for the removal of these games, but fans suspect it had something to do with the portrayal of Chinese and Taiwanese teams in the games. Weird. The Atelier series had somewhere around 16 games on the Switch, but one of these is forever lost, with its physical version out of print and the digital version delisted from the eShop. Atelier Lydia and Suell, The Alchemists and the Mysterious Paintings. This was removed in April 2021 to coincide with the release of the DX version of the same game. While it's still playable on Switch, the original release is gone for good. Remember Bakugan? The game we got an entire Treehouse presentation about? Yep, it's already gone. Released in November 2020 and delisted less than two years later in August 2022, Bakugan was not long for this world. Apparently WB Games and WayForward decided not to renew the license for Bakugan, leading to its removal from digital storefronts. I'm sure we're all mourning its loss. When Bill & Ted Face the Music released in 2020, it briefly captured the nostalgia center of the internet's collective hive mind, but it was fleeting. The movie came and went, and so did this collection. Released in February 2023, Bill & Ted's excellent retro collection was pulled from the eShop and physical sales less than a year later in January 2024. What was the cause? Well, the license expired. Fortunately, if you're looking for this one, it's still pretty easy to find on the secondhand market. 
In January 2023, developer and publisher Golden Orb closed their doors, leading to their games being delisted from the Switch eShop worldwide. Both of their games, Cinderella and Sieben Stikes Nerdventure, were dropped as a result. I never played either of these, and I'm betting you didn't either. If you're interested though, Nerdventure is still at least available on itch.io to this day. Cooking Mama Cookstar is one of the weirdest delisted games ever. It was developed by First Playable Productions and published by Planet Entertainment in North America and Raven's Court in Europe. Cookstar was delisted within 24 hours of its release, making it the shortest lived Switch title ever. In the chaos that ensued, it was revealed that the North American publisher didn't have the right to distribute the game and was subsequently sued by Office Create, the owner of the Cooking Mama franchise. In the end, Planet never got to redistribute the game, Office Create hasn't released a new Cooking Mama game, and the broken, buggy release is still easy enough to find on the secondhand market if you're willing to risk your Switch overheating. Good luck! Crayola Scoot was a game that answered the question, what if Splatoon crossed over with those scooters your friends would absolutely roast you for if they caught you riding one? It, unsurprisingly, did not make a lasting impression. No official reason has been given for why Crayola Scoot was delisted, but it left the eShop in December 2022, and if I'm honest, I'm glad it has. Cryptract was a live service game that was published by Lions Film. In Japan, the game was known as Girls and Dragons. After coming to Switch in 2019, the game was delisted in August 2023. Cryptract was a live service game, and August 30th, 2023 marked the end of its service, so this one makes sense at least. No point in downloading a game you can't play, right? For just two weeks in the beginning of 2022, Dual Princess was available on the eShop. The developers billed it as a deck-building roguelite, but they didn't talk so much about the other bits. Yeah, I'm guessing those might be the reason why the game got delisted a couple of weeks after its launch. No official word was ever given by the developers, but they say they want the game back on Nintendo's platform, so maybe this one won't stay delisted forever. Nintendo themselves have entered the list with one of the most noteworthy examples of a game being delisted from the Switch eShop with Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light. The never-before-released Fire Emblem got its first-ever Western localization as part of the series' 30th anniversary celebration. Nintendo was very upfront about the fact that this game would be delisted when it was released, and they followed through on that promise on March 31st, 2021. I'll never understand the logic behind this. Surely an NES ROM didn't need to be a limited item, but if you really want to play it, the Japanese version of the game is still available in the Famicom NSO app. Why'd you do this? Why, Nintendo? I don't know about you, but the 4v1 genre filled with games like Evolve, Dead by Daylight, and the subject of this segment, Friday the 13th, never sat well with me. I just don't really enjoy these types of games, though it seems this game's fate wasn't due to lack of popularity. Instead, like so many other games on this list, licensing is at the core of its demise. While Friday the 13th is still online until December 31st, 2024, the game was pulled from physical and digital storefronts on all platforms on December 31st, 2023. A nasty legal battle put an early end to content updates for the game, with the last new content for the ailing title released in November 2020. I didn't know what type of game Fuser actually was until I was researching this video. It released in late 2020, against the launch of the now current-gen consoles, and because of that, Fuser was doomed to be lost in the shuffle. Like many of Harmonix's other titles, Fuser was a music-based live service game. Its life was cut short in December 2022, likely due to Epic's acquisition of the company, though no formal reason has been given. Following the purchase of Harmonix, Epic put the team to work on creating Fortnite Festival, a new rock band-like experience in the Fortnite universe, so at least they're still doing what they're known for. Galaxy Variant S was a free-to-play game similar to old-school shmups like R-Type. As with most free-to-play games, it was riddled with microtransactions and daily goals to get you to play while not having so much fun that you didn't feel the need to pay. Service for Variant S ended on January 31st, 2021, nearly two years after a regular version of the game, simply titled Galaxy, Z, was released for the Switch, and that version is still available today if you want to see what this game was all about. On June 8th, 2023, NIS America announced they would no longer be able to offer God Wars The Complete Legend or The Lost Child on the Switch eShop. 
God Wars was a tactical RPG with middling reviews, and The Lost Child was a first-person RPG with a battle system similar to the original Fantasy Star. I've never played either title, so I can't say anything about how good or bad they are, but it looks like the cause for these games getting delisted was the termination of an agreement between Kadokawa and NIS America to publish their games in the US. To date, these games haven't resurfaced in the States via an alternative publisher, but you can find both fairly easily online if you're interested in picking them up. Gods Remastered is a remake of an Amiga game that was available on the Switch from March 28th, 2019 until March 27th, 2022. In a Steam announcement, the developers and publishers, Robot Riot, indicated that licensing issues were to blame for the game's delisting. Sketchy key resellers still offer the game for Steam, but if you're looking for the Switch version, you're sadly out of luck. I never heard of Hyper Brawl until I was researching this video, and after checking out footage, I know why. Hyper Brawl looks like something that wouldn't pique my interest no matter what. It's a pseudo-sports game with hero characters in which you try to violently throw a ball into a goal. I'm sure it has its fans, but I'm not one of them. It was released in October 2020 and left the eShop on September 30th, 2022. To this day, I wonder who greenlit Jump Force, the game that asks, what if anime was ugly? Finding out Jump Force was delisted is one of the few bright spots in compiling this list for me. While I love the concept, the art direction left so much to be desired that, like so many other players, I couldn't be bothered to even start the game. Jump Force was delisted after just about one and a half years on the market. It released in August of 2020 and was removed in February 2022. Good riddance. Now this one stings. Killer Queen Black is loads of fun, but apparently that fun was not meant to last. After just a year on the market, Killer Queen Black was removed from all storefronts because the tool that Liquid Bit, the game's developer and publisher used to build it, was completely shuttered. Killer Queen Black was built using Amazon GameSparks, a service that builds online infrastructure into games. When Amazon killed the service, it essentially killed the game, and by the looks of it in 2024, the studio Liquidbit as well. These days, Liquidbit's website is gone, and their social media accounts have been inactive for over a year. It's a real shame, as Killer Queen Black remains an amazing local multiplayer experience that's inaccessible to so many players. For a few weeks in the summer of 2021, everybody was excited for EA's dodgeball game, Knockout City. And for good reason. Knockout City's developer was Velen Studios, who Nintendo trusted enough to hand over the keys to Mario Kart to create Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, one of the Switch's most unique games involving a remote-controlled Mario Kart fixed with a camera. I had a blast with that game, but Knockout City? Mm, not so much. Apparently, I wasn't alone in that assessment either. Knockout City was officially knocked out of the eShop on February 28th, 2023, less than two years after its May 21st, 2021 debut on the Switch. Not a lot of information is available on this one. Mad Age and This Guy released on Switch in early 2019 or late 2018, depending on what part of the world you're in, and disappeared from the eShop somewhere between late September and early December 2020. It was a steampunk-styled take on Bomberman, and nobody really knows why it was delisted. Both the developer and publisher are still around and making games, and Mad Age in This City is still available on Steam. Pretty weird. That's right, even one of the biggest games in the world isn't immune from being delisted. Minecraft Nintendo Switch Edition was delisted to make way for Minecraft for Nintendo Switch, which added support for Realms. I'm not sure why Microsoft and Mojang needed to re-release the game to get this, but the Switch wasn't the only console this happened on, as the game was also delisted for Xbox One at the same time. The old version of Minecraft can still be downloaded if you already owned it, and it even still works. But if you want to use the new version, you can download that for free as well, provided you owned the original. On top of this, Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 and Minecraft Story Mode The Complete Adventure were both delisted from the Switch eShop in the summer of 2019, this time due to license expiration and the fact that the developer, Telltale Games, had gone out of business. Mirror was a match 3 puzzle game that dropped on the Switch in late 2019. It was delisted in August 2021. There's no information on why this one was dropped, but the PC version is more... uh... adult in nature. The toned down version on Nintendo consoles wasn't as popular for some reason, so I'm guessing the publisher pulled out of the console business and focused on where they could make the most money. Missile Command Recharged is one of the more interesting entries on this list, as the developer was very blunt about their reasoning for pulling the game. 
This one hit the eShop on May 27, 2020 and was delisted in late October 2022. The developer said they basically weren't happy with how the game came out and decided to remake it from scratch. After pouring more effort into a new version of the game, the new Missile Command Recharged was made available to purchase and remains on the eShop as of the publication of this video. Mistover was a single-player dungeon crawler developed and published by Crafton. It released in October 2019 on the Switch and was removed from the eShop in July of 2022. No official reasoning has been given for its delisting. This is another game I wish I had known about. It looks cool enough, and I wish I could have tried it. You know what game I have no interest in trying though? This one. Monster Jam Crush It is the epitome of shovelware. It featured real stadiums and well-known monster trucks though, which means licensing is likely the reason this game is no more. After less than two years on the market, Monster Jam is gone. NBA Playgrounds is one of the most well-known delistings in Switch history. It was made by Saber Interactive, who went on to make the excellent port of The Witcher 3 for Switch. Making this saga even weirder, NBA Playgrounds was replaced by a new version of the game dubbed NBA Playgrounds Enhanced Edition. The original version of Playgrounds was delisted in January 2018, with the Enhanced Edition following suit in October of that same year. Ever heard of the Nightmares from the Deep series? Yeah, me neither. There isn't much to say here. This game came to Switch in August 2018 and left in January 2022 along with all other console releases. The reason? Licensing. The rights to this series were sold to a new company, G5 Entertainment, and they have opted not to re-release these games. I guess I'll never know who the siren called. Onigiri is an action MMO and it's been released on everything. Having launched in 2014, it was one of the first PS4 games and it got ported to Xbox and Vita in addition to the Switch. The Switch port came in 2019 and was delisted on September 26, 2022. The interesting thing about this is that the developers allowed Switch players to transfer their data to the Steam version before shutting the servers down. If you want to try this one out, it's still available on Steam today. Can you believe Overwatch got delisted? I admittedly don't follow Overwatch, so the changeover to Overwatch 2 is something that I'm just now learning of, but Overwatch, the Switch version lasted just under three years, launching in October 2019 and leaving the eShop in June of 2022. Overwatch 2 is now available on Switch, which for whichever reason replaced the original. That's, that's not great. Oh, Pac-Man 99. How I miss you. Pac-Man 99 was meant to heal wounds, not to make new ones. After Nintendo delisted Super Mario 35, Pac-Man 99 was there to give us something new to enjoy, but that would be short-lived. Pac-Man 99 was only around for a couple of years, arriving in April 2021 and leaving in October 2023. At least we still have Tetris 99 and F-Zero 99. Nothing will ever happen to those, right? Developed and published by Savic, Popeye is... a game. It looks like an unreal project that a lone developer put a week into and called it. Popeye runs around bland, lifeless landscapes and collects hearts. Wow. It was delisted from the eShop in June 2023. No reason was given, but if I had to guess, licensing is to blame. The Pro Yaku Famista series has been around as long as Nintendo has been in the video game business. Licensing issues, however, are par for the course with sports games, and even a long-running series like this is bound to have a few delisted titles within it. Pro Yaku Famista Evolution released in August 2018 and was delisted on February 28, 2019, and Pro Yaku Famista 2020 was released on September 17, 2020 and delisted the following May, leaving no entries in the series on Nintendo's current-gen console. Project Downfall is a first-person shooter with a decidedly retro vibe. It was released on Switch on February 2nd, 2024, and was delisted after just a week on the platform. No official reason has been given, but the developers have mentioned the game needs to be recertified before it returns, meaning this game is all but guaranteed to come back, rendering this portion of the video extinct. Red Game Without a Great Name launched on Switch in the console's first year of life on December 7th, 2017. It's a game about being a bird? Traveling through a red world? Either way, this one was delisted from the Switch in July 2020. If you want to try it, it's still available on the PS Vita, oddly enough. Now this one hurts. RXN Raijin looks amazing. 
It's a bullet hell shooter with a soundtrack composed by the person who did Streets of Rage, Yuzo Koshiro. After seeing footage of this, I desperately wish it was still available. There was a limited physical release that was only on PlayAsia, but it goes for insane prices now if you can even find it. Smart Moves is a simple puzzle game developed by Grin Robot and published by Ternox. From the footage, this game looks to be a puzzle game that's based on movement and monster slang, kind of like a low-rent version of Crypt of the Necrodancer. Smart Moves arrived on the Switch on December 21st, 2020, and left sometime in mid-2022. If you're interested in checking it out, it's still available on Steam and Xbox. Spellbreak was a hero shooter that replaced guns and bullets with spells and mana. It released on September 3rd, 2020, and was removed from the eShop when the server shut down on January 10th, 2023. There's really not much else to say here. The game clearly failed to find an audience, but in an awesome gesture of goodwill, the developers released a community version of Spellbreak for free on PC with support for community-run servers. I really wish more developers took this approach when they shut their games down. Starghost was a simple, arcadey side-scrolling shooter that released on the Wii U in 2016 and came to the Switch in late 2017. It departed the Switch eShop on February 1st, 2021, and a delisted games contributor was able to get a direct comment from the publisher. According to them, Starghost was simply removed from the eShop due to a lack of popularity. Stella was a visually arresting platformer that reminds me of Grease, one of the Switch's well-known indies. It came out on March 13th, 2020, and was delisted on February 1st, 2023, following the purchase of the developer Skybox Labs by NetEase. Stella looks interesting enough, but I've never had a chance to check this one out. The good news is, it's still on Apple Arcade. We've all heard of Stranger Things. Decidedly fewer of us have heard of the games based on the series. Stranger Things 3 was an adventure game that took the style of an old-school SNES game. I've never been a big fan of Stranger Things, so I let this one pass me by. Unlike many games on our list, Stranger Things 3 is unavailable anywhere. The game just can't be bought anymore unless you find a secondhand physical copy. Super Bomberman R Online, not to be confused with Super Bomberman R, the Switch launch window title, was a massively multiplayer Bomberman game and an early favorite of GVG's community. It came out on Switch on May 27th, 2021, after a little under a year of exclusivity on Stadia, only to be delisted and have its online services shut down on December 1st, 2022. On March 31st, 2021, Nintendo chose violence. We lost both Super Mario 3D All-Stars and the stellar Super Mario Bros. 35. This one hurt. While 3D All-Stars received a mixed reception thanks to what was viewed as a cash grab for some ROMs slapped onto the Switch with minimal enhancements, Mario 35 was almost universally loved. It was one of the best freebies Nintendo ever gave the community. Of course, there's no chance of either of these coming back, but I'll never understand why Nintendo needed to delist these. Super Mega Baseball 2 is one of the most recent delistings in this video, having left the eShop on January 26, 2024. The Super Mega Baseball series is on its fourth entry on the Switch with no signs of slowing down, and these are published by EA, so they must be doing well for the Mega Publisher not to have canned the series in its entirety, as they're pretty keen to do so. While Super Mega Baseball 2 is no more, 3 and 4 are still available on the eShop as of the making of this list. Taiko no Tatsujin, or Taiko Drum Master as it was once known here in the States, is one of my favorite rhythm game series of all time. And this title being lost forever, well, it's a crying shame. I own this one physically, and I even bought the drum that Hori made for it. It had Kirby and Inklings in it, and a ton of great licensed music, which is almost certainly why the game was discontinued. If you want to scratch that itch, however, you can still pick up Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival on Switch as of the making of this video. The Legend of Heroes Akatsuki no Kiseki Mobile is a Japan-only spin-off of the Trails of Cold Steel series that was originally released as a free-to-play browser game, but was later ported to PlayStation consoles and the Switch. It left the eShop on April 28, 2022, but remains available on PC and mobile platforms in Japan to this day. Troll and I is one of the first examples I can recall of a comically bad Switch game. It came out on August 15th, 2017, and was delisted nearly five years later. It may be gone, but I promise you, you'll have no problem finding a used copy at a low price. Volta X was produced by Gung Ho, who are currently best known for Ninjala, at least in the world of Switch games. 
At the same E3 that Grandia was demoed to me, I checked out Volta X. I didn't take much away from that meeting other than that the game felt overly complex. Dueling robots are fun, but this felt like a step in the wrong direction. It disappeared after just under two years on the eShop and is now essentially lost media as it never received a physical release. Warhammer 40k Space Wolf released on the Switch on March 26, 2019. Space Wolf was a tactical RPG that included some card-based elements. Visually, it was pretty good looking for a game of its ilk, and it seems it only got delisted because the developer's license to use the Warhammer 40k brand expired. Last but not least, we have Whip Whip. Whip Whip looks like an early SNES game, and I mean that in the best way. The music and gameplay look like something I'd absolutely want to play. The developer of Whip Whip, Alpha Unit, went out of business, causing the game to be delisted in September 2022. However, it's still available on Steam, so I would make sure you get this one if you're interested. Researching this made me go out and buy it as well. Whoa, you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. That was a lot of games to cover. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit and watch through the whole video. It helps the channel out a ton, of course. But I want to give special thanks to, again, the folks at DelistedGames.com who compiled this information that I sifted through, as well as the various YouTubers from whom I borrowed footage. You can find links to their specific videos and their channels in the description down below. Uh, I wouldn't be able to put together a game on delisted videos without borrowing footage from others. So again, thank you to those channels that I borrowed footage from. And thank you to you for watching and supporting. If you want to support us further, you can head to patreon.com slash gvgaming to find out how you can subscribe, get involved, and join our Discord community. Uh, but this is going to do it for me. I'll be back next time with a look at Helldivers 2. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.